Today's focus for this Lenten prayer is from a very familiar story, David and Goliath. Let us bow our heads for prayer. O oh Lord, thank you for this opportunity you have given me. Help me to speak your word and bless each and every one of us. In your precious name, Amen. As you all know, the whole world is anxiously preparing and taking precautions on the major outbreak of the coronavirus. Everyone is stocking up resources, expecting a shortage. People are using hand sanitizers and extra cleansing techniques to prevent contamination. In this scenario, I would like to emphasize the preparation needed for this Lenten period. As Christians, we are eagerly waiting for his second coming. So, are we properly cleansing ourselves? Are we properly purifying ourselves? Are we overcoming our temptations? For this devotion, can everyone please familiarize themselves with 1 Samuel chapter 17? This is the story of David and Goliath. The story follows with the giant Goliath challenging the Israelites to a match with their mightiest warrior. But everyone was terrified to challenge such a strong and massive warrior. His height was six cubits. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels. On his leg, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. During this time, David, son of Jesse, was a young shepherd boy looking after his father's sheep. One day, when David went to the camp to visit his brothers, at this time, he heard Goliath disgracing the Israelites. Even though the Israelites did not approve of this, no one was courageous enough to face Goliath. It was at this moment, David decided he would do it himself. David was a strong believer in God and trusted that God would look over him on the battlefield. Saul allowed him to face Goliath, even though everyone doubted him. Goliath was a giant warrior since his youth, and David was just a young shepherd. David approached the battle with confidence. He knew, just like God had saved him from the paws of a lion, he can save David from the clutches of Goliath. He picked up five smooth stones and had a sling. He took perfect aim and shot it straight at Goliath's head. With one single shot, Goliath dropped to the ground defeated. A massive figure such as Goliath had been bested by such a small boy. Now, in this period of Lent, there are four major points we must consider from this story. 1. Goliath represents our temptations. For all of us, it may be different temptations. 2. We must believe and have confidence in God, just like David had when facing Goliath. 3. The stones that David picked, they are our right decisions in life our way of overcoming our temptations. And four, David's aim, the method we must take in order to overcome our temptations. For the second coming, we must be our best self, meaning to be as pure as possible. We cannot hold on to any temptations and must overcome them. Our temptations can be as big as Goliath, and it will be extremely difficult for us to overcome such an obstacle. However, if we were to face our temptations, just like David faced Goliath, then we can overcome anything. The first point is to believe and have confidence in God. We must have the utmost trust in God when facing our trials. With God on our side, He will help us to climb over our temptations. As verse 33 states, Saul replied, You are not able to go against the Philistine and fight him. 
You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior since his youth. Now, even though no one may support you or believe in you, always remember that God will be by your side. God will lend us confidence and courage to go on and achieve our goals. It can be seen in verse 37. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. This shows that if we believe in God and place our confidence in him, he will help us to overcome our trials. The second point is making the right decisions. David picked five smooth stones. This means we can't just use any random weapons. They must be perfect for the job. For example, David could have chosen to use a boulder as big as Goliath, but that might, have, that might not have made the distance. As verse 38 to 39 says, Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. He could have chosen to fight with armor and a sword, but he is not used to fighting like a warrior. So as he was a shepherd, he chose something he was accustomed to, which was his sling and stones. As such, when overcoming our temptations, we need to choose the best way for us to win. The perfect decision best suited for us will allow us to overcome our temptations. As Christians, this could be prayer or fasting. Finally, David aimed the stone right at Goliath's forehead. Verse 49 states, Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. For example, if David was to shoot it at Goliath's leg, he might have stumbled down, but he still would have gotten back up. So just like David aimed it right at Goliath's forehead, we need to make sure we face our temptations head on and not put it down for a while and then let us consume us again. We must overcome it at its core. So as we wait for his second coming, we need to remember three points to overcome our temptations. One, believe and have confidence in God. Two, right decisions at the right time. And three, aim without failure. So as I conclude, I would like to emphasize Face our temptations with confidence in God, with the right decisions, and aim without failure. Thank you.